Hey, Tim, what's up? Hey, Daddy-O. You know, 3D, you got 16 chins. Oh, no, don't tell me they bought your idea to do tool time in 3D. Not just tool time. For one night, every show on the station is in 3D, right? Knitting with Norm? No. Yeah? Cooking with Irma? Oh, well, that would be a great ratings grabber. What, we have Irma's fish kebabs flying at the camera? <laughs> All right, so it sounds a little cheesy. Sounds cheesy? All right, it is cheesy. That's what makes it fun. We'll be following the prestigious footsteps of great horror classics, the 3D movie, Dr. Fong's House of Chain Gang Cheerleaders. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love Dr. Fong. I, I never liked 3D, you know? When I was a kid, my favorite movie was The Sound of Music. <laughs> There's a movie that would have been better in 3D. Can you imagine 50 nuns coming at you like ping pong balls? <laughs> like a bad habit. <laughs> what place does 3D have in a serious tool show? None. That's why we're doing it on tool time. <laughs> It'll be great. A visual feast. The audience will feel like they're right on the set with me. So they can feel the same terror I do. <laughs> Lighten up a bit. Look at the equipment. It's so cool. Two cameras. One shoots at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. You put all the equipment together. Tape comes out, put on the glasses, bada bing, you're scared half to death. Well, it'll take a lot more than 3D to scare Al Borland. Really? Put them on. I'll show you the tape I did this afternoon. Whoa! That's so real. I, I can almost feel it. Whoa! <laughs> Start giving out those Nobel Prizes. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, Hi, Mrs. Mom. Taylor. Oh, Hi, Angela. I lost your socks, too. If you show me which drawer they go in, I'll put them away for you. All right, follow me. <laughs> Why is Angela doing Brad's laundry? She probably wanted something new after she cleaned his room. <laughs> she cleaned his room, too? How long has this been going on? I don't know, but she does nice work. <laughs> You know, I'm going to ask her if she can give me a Wednesday. I wonder if Angela has a younger sister. My closet's a mess. Okay, wait, hold it, hold it right there, both of you. I did not raise my sons to regard women as servants. I've taught you to be responsible and independent, which means you do your own chores, you clean up your own messes, and under no circumstances do you ever treat the female sex as though they're housekeepers put here to wait on you hand and foot. Honey, I'm going to pop that in the washer for me. I think I'll just pop on out of here. I think maybe I'll pop on out of here. Tim, we have a terrible situation here. What? Brad is letting Angela do his laundry. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whites or colors? Do you really not get what's wrong with this picture? Same old story, isn't it? Boy meets girl, girl does boys' laundry, and I get yelled at. Wow. Angela does good work. Yeah, she does, doesn't she? I want to talk about you two. Mom, we've already had the sex talk. <laughs> This isn't the sex talk. This is the socks talk. 
I was kind of disappointed to hear that you asked Angela to do your laundry and chores for you. No, I, I didn't ask you. I could have said no. I didn't want to be impolite. <laughs> Tell me something. Uh, do you do anything for Angela? I don't know. We don't keep score. <laughs> In other words, nothing. Look, honey, this sets a really bad precedent. It puts the female in a subservient position. Mom, is this going to be another one of your feminist lectures? Brad, women have worked really hard to achieve equality. I know, and the right to make their own choices. Right, exactly. Yeah, well, Angela's choice is to do my laundry. And it's anti-feminist of you to judge her for that. You're destroying everything women have worked so hard to achieve. <laughs> tried to talk to Brad. He just didn't understand what I was saying. Well, just keep hammering it into him. Eventually, he'll come around to your point of view. As opposed to your point of view, which would be... Same as yours. So you agree that Brad shouldn't let Angela do his chores? The truth, honey, I think you're making kind of a big deal out of this. Learning to treat women as equals is a very big deal. Kid's 16 years old. He's got plenty of time to develop a mature relationship and learn how to play the game. <laughs> the game. I mean, Brad's going to figure out pretty soon, in order to make peace with a woman, you're going to have to pitch in now and then. To make peace. <laughs> so that's the only reason that you do anything around here? And because I, I really like it. You do not. You're just playing the game. Well, the, the important thing is I, I help you out. Help me out? Yeah. Do you have any idea how demeaning that sounds? I used to be a lot better playing this game. <laughs> you're implying that all the housework is, is my responsibility. Except occasionally when you're generous enough to grace me with your help. I say that, you know. I, you may do more housework, but I do yard work to help you out. I work on the cars to help you out. <laughs> You work on the cars to help me out? Yeah. Well, thank you, because, you know, my life is going to be so much easier when the hot rod has six to one compression. Actually, it'll have eight to one. <laughs> Tim, this is not about who does more housework. What this has to do with is setting a good example for the boys. I think I set a pretty darn good example for the boys. Thank you. I know, I know. You, it's just that this is a really pivotal time in their lives, and they need to know that you share the responsibilities with me because you want to be an equal partner. I like that. It's good. <laughs> and and I, it's fine with me if you want to tell them that. <laughs> Don't you think that it would be better coming from you? Something tells me I do. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you guys are out here. Want to play some ball? No, I think it'd be a lot more fun to talk about relationships. <laughs> huh? I just want you both to know that your mom and I share an equal relationship. We share responsibilities equally. What'd you do this time? <laughs> what makes you think I did anything? Dad, you're a guy. You don't like to talk about relationships. <laughs> Such a sexist attitude. Have you learned nothing from me? Did you drop another beam on Mom's car? <laughs> I didn't drop anything on Mom's car. Well, you know, I know what this is about. Mom's angry at Brad for letting Angela do his laundry, and now she's taking it out on Dad. She just wants to make sure that I'm a good role model for you guys. Dad, do you really think Angela doing Brad's laundry is such a terrible thing? I mean, if a girl wanted to do my laundry, I wouldn't mind. You should mind. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Seems to me you got plenty of time to get beaten down. What do you mean? Well, eventually it happens to all of us. If you meet that special someone who forces you into an equal relationship. Excuse me? And there's that special someone now. How could you say that? that men are beaten down by women. Stop it, please. There's sharp chicken bones in there. You promised me that you were going to set a good example for the boys. Oh, come on. They saw right through me. They know me better than that. Well, I guess they know you better than I do. I thought you were going to back me up. 
Well, if I have one flaw, it's that I'm honest. If you have one flaw, I'm Cindy Crawford. <laughs> Thanks to your honesty, we've now not only lost Brad, we might as well write off Mark and Randy as well. We haven't lost anybody. Mm. Let me ask you a question. Bottom line, what do you think would happen if the boys turned out just like me? It would be the strongest argument yet against cloning. <laughs> hey, don't bring sheep into this. Look, Tim, if you don't set a good example for the boys, how are they going to have healthy relationships with women? Because we have a healthy relationship. Only if I force you to. I can't help how I am. Men have a chromosome you women don't have. The Y chromosome. As in, why do I have to talk about the relationship? And why do I have to put up with this? You know why, Jill? Because men are men. You know how much you want to do it, you can't turn men into women. It can't be done. Well, it can be, but it's very expensive. And you still end up with an Adam's apple and big hands. Does everybody know what time it is? Oh, that's right. Finford Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Tim the Tool Man Taylor, and you all know my assistant, Al Borland. Thank you. We have a very special tool time for you, presented in 3D. <laughs> Just because it's in 3D doesn't mean you have to yell at them, Al. Sorry? Al's actually a pro at this. You probably remember some of his old 3D movies. Beard Man from Alcatraz. <laughs> Creature from the Flannel Lagoon. <laughs> that movie, I cried till I stopped. <laughs> and who could forget, it came from Baskin Robbins. Remember, 3D is just an illusion. In reality, Tim has no depth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's springtime. Time to think about barbecues. Bring out those fatty foods and that frisbee. But the Borland home spring always began at the picnic table. And after they were done eating that... Today we're going to show you how to build a picnic table. Now remember, your table's dimensions will always depend on how many people you plan to seat. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Actually, we pre-cut our two-by-six boards to the proper... Whoa! 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 Okay, we'll fasten those down with our two-by-four braces using wood screws... And this drill. Whoa, whoa! Thank you, Heidi. Now, we've already miter cut our two by four legs and we're ready to bolt them together. Remember, the secret to a tight fit is good notches. For our tool time fans south of the border, that's buenos notches. <laughs> okay, while well, I was finishing up those legs, I'll move on to cut the hole for the umbrella. picnic basket. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I thinking? I'll get that. Okay. You sure? Sure. Sit down. Let me get that for you. Thanks. We got to eat here. Let's toss salad for Heidi. Thank you. Little fried chicken for me. And what do you have for me? Oh, I know how you like hot dogs. I got one here you like ten times as much. <laughs> Whoa! Well, neighbor Ed, I have outdone myself. This year, my tulips are more gorgeous than ever. They're gorgeous. What's your secret? A very good florist. <laughs> <laughs> so how does your garden grow? Oh, it's a little heavy on the manure lately. <laughs> Brad thinks it's okay to have Angela do his chores for him, and Tim doesn't see anything wrong with that. Oh, men. 
No matter how much ground we feminists have gained, there is still so much work left to be done. We feminists? Oh, Jill, I've always been a big proponent of the women's movement. You know, I spent most of the 60s with my face behind a protest sign. Well, here I am in this whole household of men, and I'm just disgusted with myself because I've had absolutely no impact on any of them. Do you remember that time that I gave Tim uh, Betty Friedan's book, you know, The, the Feminine Mystique? Mm -hmm. I take it he didn't like it. He loved it. He used it to level the legs of his workbench. <laughs> oh, sister, sister, sister. The thing that really upsets me is to see Brad not respecting women. Well, Jill, Brad is new in his relationships with the opposite sex. Yeah, I'm sure he's just testing the water. Angela's using it to wash his clothes. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's going to change. So, you think there's hope? Oh, sure I do. And the English novelist Jelly Cooper would agree with me. She said the male is a domestic animal which, when treated with firmness and kindness, can be trained to do anything. Who trained you? The English novelist Jelly Cooper. <laughs> we had a brief fling during my semester at Oxford. You know, I never realized I was becoming enlightened until one day I found myself wearing her apron and frosting her cupcakes. Oh, man, I'm kind of hungry. Me too. How about making me a ham sandwich? Yeah. Hey, guys. How about you, Dad? You want her to make you one? I don't need Angela to make me a sandwich. She doesn't mind. I don't mind. I don't need you to make me a sandwich, thanks. Well, I could toss you a salad. I'm really not that hungry, actually. Thanks, anyway. Hey, uh, I, uh, I finished recessing the other turn indicator in the garage. Would you take a look at it with me for a minute? Yeah, cool. All right, excuse us for a minute. I'll be right back. Very smooth, Brad. Yeah, I can see that. You did a great job filing the edges. No, I'm talking about you and Angela. Boy, you snap your finger and she just jumps into action. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Do you ever wonder why she does stuff like that? She enjoys it. I'm not so sure. Sometimes uh, girls do that because they're afraid if they don't do stuff like that, men won't like them. Where'd you hear that? I read it. <laughs> you know that book that's holding up the workbench? <laughs> it's called The Feminine Mistake. <laughs> it's, it's written by Betsy Freeloader. <laughs> So now you're a feminist, too? I don't know what I am, but there's stuff in there about a relationship that makes a lot of sense. When the girl does all the work, it's not a good relationship. Yeah, you're just saying this because you ended up marrying somebody like Mom. Excuse me? Well, don't get me wrong, I love Mom. I didn't end up with Mom. I love her. I love her because she's a strong woman. You like that she gives you a hard time? Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes it exciting. I keep trying to think of new ways to slip stuff by her. And she's always come up new ways to nail me. We're equal partners. And you think that's good? Well, I don't know. It works for me. But maybe having Angela as your sandwich girl works for you. Whole life is sandwiches. Maybe give her a sandwich. Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. Maybe give her a sandwich. Where's Brad? He's in the garage with his dad looking at the hot rod. I'm making him a ham sandwich. Angela, do you really think that's a good idea? Why? You think you'd rather have turkey? We have to have a talk. Okay, right when I'm done with the sandwich. Do you think you'll want fruit? Maybe I'll cut up an orange. Uh, sister, sister, sister. <laughs> oh, hey, Dad, I don't know what kind of mustard you want. Mild goes better with dill pickles, but if you want sweet pickles, then I'll give you the Dijon. I also need to know what kind of cheese you want. You shouldn't be making me a sandwich. I don't mind. I do. Don't you like my sandwiches? I like you. That's why I don't think a girl should do stuff for a guy when he can do it on his own. Yes! <laughs> when did you start feeling this way? Oh, I don't know, about three minutes ago when I was in the garage. <laughs> wow, making your own sandwich. Save some of that lunch meat. There's other carnivores around here. <laughs> Tip. What did I do now? You know what you did. 
No, I don't, but I'm not sure I care. <laughs> Right. I'll take care of those. How much longer are you going to stay? I'm waiting for the 3D guys to come pick up their cameras. Well, just make sure when they pick them up, they're still in one piece. Joking. Do I look like I'm joking? <laughs> they saw right through me. They know me better than that. Well, I guess they know you better than I do. I thought you were going to back me up. Well, if I have one flaw, it's because I'm honest. If you have one flaw, I'm Cindy Crawford. Cindy? I'm Cindy. <laughs> Men are born with a chromosome women don't even have. The Y chromosome. As in, why do I have to keep talking about relationships? And why do I have to put up with this? <laughs> <laughs> 